The market has had plenty of data out of the U.S. this week to digest and assess the current state of the U.S. economy. So here with me now to discuss some of the facts and figures is senior economist Michael Gregory from BMO Capital Markets. Michael, nice to speak to you. Now, looking at some of the data coming out of the U.S. this week, the numbers aren't all that disappointing. For example, we've seen a rebound in consumer confidence, a pickup in house prices, and even today, ADP employment rose more than forecast. However, ISM manufacturing again came in below that key 50 level. Is there any particular data this week that's impressed or disappointed you the most, or perhaps slightly out of line in terms of trends or expectations? Well, I, I think the one that uh, stands out is, is probably the, the ISM figures. Uh, I mean, it is consistent with, with what we are seeing globally uh, with a slowdown in the factory segment. And, uh, uh, but, you know, th- this had led the U.S. economy through the early part of uh, this year, and it, and it has slowed quite substantially. So it is still unsettling that the ISM index remains below that critical 50 level, just barely, but, but still, that's two months in a row. Homing in on consumer confidence, going forward there is still the same uncertainties plaguing consumers as well as businesses, including the situation in the Eurozone and the political debate surrounding the fiscal cliff. Do you suspect that confidence could fall again in coming months? Also, what about this rising saving rate? Well, there's no question consumers are starting to pull back a bit, uh, saving instead of spending and, and, and continuing with debt repayments, which, of course, ends up uh, being measured as a savings as well. And uh, while the confidence numbers this week uh, were a little bit better uh, than, ex- than expected, and not so much because of uh, the consumer's assessment of the current situation, but they're a little more upbeat about how things may unfold in the future, uh, uh, that, that doesn't belie the fact that uh, you know the confidence remains vulnerable to the developments both in Europe and also on the U.S. fiscal front. Now, we did see just uh, yesterday that Congress did a, agree on uh, a, a, a spending bill which would uh, you know, keep the U.S. government open through the turn of the year. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, it does show that there's room for compromise, but you still have a debt ceiling which uh, uh, will likely end or be hit by the end of this year. And, of course, the fiscal cliff. What's going to happen with all those tax and spending measures that are slated to increase? And that's a tremendous source of uncertainty. Let's put it this way. Uh, if you're a business, you really don't know what your tax rate is going to be. If you're a consumer, you have no idea what your income tax rate is going to be starting in just a few months. So that, that creates a huge amount of uncertainty. Also, in terms of borrowing, if many businesses and consumers aren't borrowing now when rates are so low, are they likely to change their minds even if rates are reduced a little bit further? That is the critical thing. Uh, you know, we are seeing a little bit of credit creation uh, on the household side for things like vehicle loans, credit card loans, student loans, but uh, we haven't really seen the big turnaround on the mortgage side yet. And and that's perhaps where the you know this week's data on home prices showing you know continued improvement, continued move towards stabilization is so key because th- that is probably the missing ingredient. But there's no question that consumers are being very cautious. Businesses, for the most part, are are flush with cash and really don't have to. To borrow. They're just sitting on the, their little stockpile of money waiting for, you know, uh, the, the uncertain clouds to clear up a little bit. But uh, cutting interest rates a little bit further potentially or, or some other measure to, to, to facilitate credit creation may not do very much at this stage simply, you know, with all that uh, uncertainty still hanging over uh, the economy. What about the job sector and the stubborn unemployment rate? What more can and needs to be done to boost jobs growth? Because although Bernanke has said outright more easing will come if labour market conditions don't improve, at the same time markets aren't quite convinced anymore that QE is actually doing the trick. Any amount of stimulus would help, uh, and but uh, the uh, the key thing is with you know uncertainty about Europe, uncertainty about the U.S. fiscal situation. It doesn't matter how much stimulus you throw in the economy; businesses aren't aren't going to bite and and uh, hire more, spend more on capital equipment until that uncertainty clears up. You know, uh, and and that is probably why you've seen Fed officials, particularly uh, Chairman Bernanke, really pressure Congress hard to get this thing cleared up. It, it is a a it is a casting a of a pile over uh, economic activity, and, uh, and, and, and let's put it this way, 
uh, it's self-inflicted, and, and that is the unfortunate problem. Uh, you know, we we saw the start of this year; businesses were beginning to hire hire more. It it, it wasn't like a jobs boom, but but it was steady. It was creating uh, income, and it was you know fueling spending in the economy. But we've seen that kind of pause quite considerably, and and uh, you know, so really we have to deal with the uncertainty first, and and then uh, I do think that uh, even if you get a little bit more reduction in interest rates, more QE, which which puts the further downward pressure or maybe prevents uh, long-term yields from rising, all of that at the margin will be helpful. But at this stage, it isn't very helpful with businesses still very cautious. In that case, what is your forecast for Friday's jobs data? The market consensus is that U.S. employers added around 100,000 jobs to the economy in July. Is that in line with this month's job expectations at BMO Capital Markets? Well, we're looking for slightly less than that at around uh, 90,000 uh, for total. Uh, private above 100,000, but then a, a continued drag coming from the, the public sector. I mean, basically, you know, we, we, we've seen a very weak uh, performance over the past several months, and, uh, and we, we really don't see anything sort of changing until, again, you know, we, we see that uh, uncertainty clear up a little bit. And, uh, you know, m- maybe the step we saw uh, with uh, the spending bill in Congress is, is is sort of the uh, uh, you know the, the first sign that that things will turn around and we can deal with this issue you know before the election, uh, but uh, we'll just have to see. But you know, we think we'll have very lackluster hiring uh, for the foreseeable future, and in fact, we think the unemployment rate will drift up a little bit over the next few months and probably end next year where it roughly is right now. That's another year and a half of virtually no improvement at all. Well, Michael, coming up in a few hours, we will have the FOMC rate decision. What do you think they? Will deliver today. Well, you know, given that they eased uh, last meeting in, in June, and given that in September we will have two more unemployment reports to chew on, and, and also another summary of economic projections uh, to, to deliver, uh, I do think that we will probably, you know, the Fed will reserve any further easing actions uh, until the September meeting, and today it's going to be very much similar to the kind of messages we've seen out of the Fed, that they're prepared to do more if, if conditions warrant, and, and I think uh, by September uh, the, the Fed will, will, will reach the conclusion that, that, that conditions, in fact, do warrant further easing. Michael Gregory there on the US economy. Thank you very much, Michael, for your comments. Now coming up tomorrow on Dukascopy TV, we'll have the latest on the Bank of England and ECB rate decisions, as well as more financial news, so make sure you tune back in. But for the moment, goodbye.